Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Illegal Alien Racing. This is a league final at Dallas Karting Complex. 20 laps, 27 drivers in the heavy class. In case you didn't watch the pre-final, this is a uh, modified track. It's a lot shorter. Um, I thought I finished eighth in the last race. They had me down as sixth, but I'm starting seventh, so I don't know. Green flag, here we go. I don't like to be up top going in the one on the opening lap. Again, don't wreck. Don't get spun out. Keep it tight to the inside. Everything looks okay. We got a couple of tight turns going through here. Got to be careful. And here's a new part of the track here. The left right there is new. Cut through. And then we end up back uh, on the regular racing track that we're all used to. Opening laps here too, you're kind of figuring out your cart um, as far as your performance goes. And this one um, seems to have pretty good straightaway speed, um, but it seemed to struggle a little bit coming out of the slower turns. And I think that was just due to a clutch. Um, you know, clutches wear out, it's like anything. And that's what I thought it was. I can kind of hear the whine of the motor, how it's like taking a while to wind up, and um, a little bit of a dive bomb there. He came up to me after the race and apologized, which, not a big deal, man. First time I've ever had an incident with him. It happens. He is faster than me this night anyway, so whether he got around me in that turn or somewhere else, he's going to get around me, so we'll just move on. Um, so yeah, going back to the carts, you know, these are rental carts, and you know, these carts get driven by the general public every day, all day long. I went out there uh, a couple of Saturdays ago just for fun, took a friend out. And I already knew this, but to see it again um, is just a reminder how <laughs> a lot of people, you know, they're just out here having fun. I get it. But, man, they can't drive. And they jack these carts up as far as running them off the track and hitting stuff, hitting barriers, hitting each other. Um, these carts get used and abused, and it's a ma it's a pretty incredible how resilient they are. They're like little tanks; they just keep going. They don't stop. Um, so even if they worked on them all day long, every single one of them, um, they're never going to be able to get them all completely equal. Um, just because someone's going to go in there and drive them and jack them up, um, and that's just the way it is. But so it's cool we get to race. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge, but we all understand what we're getting into, so we just deal with it and move on, do the best we can. Um, this driver back here behind me, definitely feel like he's faster than me, and um, I was driving a little defensive down the straightaway, and we'll talk about that here a little bit more coming up. A little bit of a defensive line through the middle there. Take the normal line, you can kind of hear the, the engine just... It just sounds different than it normally does. I think that's the clutch. Now, I'm not a mechanic. I just prefer just to drive them, but those are just my thoughts. And again, the feeling too, the, the way the cart feels. Okay, so right here, you see me in the middle of the track, taking the defensive line. I get one move, that's my move. Well, that's not my move. That's where I place myself on the track. If I swing up to the top, then now that's my move. I gotta stay up there. I can't come back down to the bottom if I wanted to. Or if I went to the bottom, I couldn't go back up to the middle or to the top. I got to stay where I'm at. So I established myself in the middle lane, and from there I get one move. And I um, elected to, if I'm clear from the guy, I'll swing up top. And as long as I'm not really impeding him, um, it's not that big a deal. But again, I, get, I do get one move, so even if I do impede him a little bit, it should be legal. middle of the track again he elects to follow me so again I can move up and that's my move or I can do whatever move down I go up take the normal line group of carts in front of me I'm trying to catch them but it's just not looking good um, overall it's kind of taking me a little bit to catch them We don't get too many track configuration changes anymore, um, but this is one of the few. I think this is this is the second one we've had this year, I think, which is always 
fun because a lot of these people will come out and they'll memorize the track and know exactly how to drive the track in its regular configuration. They're really fast, but then you know we change the track up and it's a completely different track. And people, the, the ones that can adjust are the ones that are that you can definitely they kind of separate themselves from everybody else. And you know, I've never been one. I've never been a guy that's the quickest to adjust. Actually, I eventually figure it out, but I'm not one of these guys that in two laps figures it out. It takes me a little longer compared to the, to uh, to some of the, the other guys. All right, seven makes a good move on me here. Nice clean move. And check behind me. No one's really back there. So this race isn't going exactly great for me. Again, I'm in a points championship race with Chance, who actually won this race. And all I know at this point, he's ahead of me. I'm trying to figure out where he's at on the track, but I'm also busy trying to drive. Uh, so I'll take a peek up there and try to figure out where he's at when I can. Um, like turn one's a good place. Like going into turn one, you can kind of peek because they're coming right back at you. You can kind of see who's, uh, who's in the lead or kind of what's going on. So everything counts. Every position counts here. Some of these guys here that we're passing are, are lap guys. Uh, this guy here does a good job of just giving me plenty of room. Uh, one one of these guys um, commented on my pre-final video, and I think it was his first. I think he had been out before racing, which you have to race before they let you race in league. At least you know be out there at least once, doing a regular session. But anyways, he um, I think this is his first league race, and it's always cool to see new people out here. And I definitely would say this group of new people uh, in this race um, raced us very respectfully. And we're not a bunch of knuckleheads, you know, just in there thinking this is bumper cars or anything like that. They were not like that. They were actually nice, clean, respectful racers. And that's cool. That's what we like to see, uh, that kind of racing. And, um, you know, rental car racing, if, you're, if you don't really watch these and this may be your first time watching one of these races, you're wondering how to get into go-karts where well, you can either do one or two things you can buy your own go-kart and start entering club level races or you can come out to league races like this where the track lets you rent their go-karts and, and organizes a race and runs the race um, I definitely think that's the way to go is try league racing um, if you want to start racing you know I knew me uh, for someone like me maybe I once I make a decision to go in a direction I'll go for it and get a go-kart let's say before I league race but um, actually for karting I was league racing first and I knew I loved it and just progression was the next step was getting like my own go-kart so that's what I did so anyways yeah if you're thinking about karting come out to your local track or this one and um, start through. league racing it's a great experience it shows you how to race around other carts and uh because here's the thing here's the thing is um being able to go out here and drive by yourself you know you do tons of laps and you figure the track out and you get pretty good times i've seen this happen a ton ton of times you get a guy like that that's just a fast he can turn fast laps you put him in a race they go straight to the back because they don't they do not understand how to race you gotta it's a completely different dynamic you've got to learn how to you know set your passes up figure out when to make the passes when to back off and how to defend um they opened up another car track called Lone star car park in the area and they started league racing and justin and i went out there we we're like the only guys that race at dkc that went out there and i won the first three league races there and justin i think he finished second a couple of times or whatever he was up there too we we basically went up there and 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 did very well against everybody else and i think that had a lot to do with our experience you know just racing in general um, a lot of the guys up there were running really fast laps but i'm just not really too convinced that they had driven in a um in a race before so that lasted about three weeks and then slowly uh, those guys got experience and you know they started understanding how to race and adapted pretty quick actually and and became very competitive which was actually good to see So one thing as well that I'll say as well, uh, one thing I'll, say, I'll mention as well is if, if you're new and you don't really watch these videos, maybe it's your first time, 
uh, try to record all your videos and all your races. Um, I remember going back when I was at this track and I recorded my fast lap and I just watched that fast lap over and over trying to figure out what I did to get to the fast lap. So I could replicate that later. Um, but one of the biggest things I've, that one of the biggest helps that watching video has given me is definitely on the starts because there's so much chaos going on, so many things are happening that um, I always think that's one of the trickiest parts of the, of the race is a start because you can make up a lot of spots or you can lose, lose a lot of spots. And um, I like going back and watching the races and figuring out did I make the right decision or not? Also, too, like I said in the pre-final video, you know, you these these situations present themselves to you while you're racing. And if you've watched video before, you've seen this scenario take place. Well, you've already got it ingrained in your memory. You know what you did the last time, and if it worked, it didn't work. So either you do the same thing or you do something, try something different. Um, because again, you know, these these decisions we make when we're trying to pass somebody or racing somebody, they happen in fractions of a second. So you don't really have time to make a decision and back out of it and go with the other decision, go with plan B. Um, it's just too late. It's all about, you know, where you're positioning your cart and just other drivers Shit, around man. you. There's just a lot going on. And sometimes you just don't have the, um, the ability to do that. So once you make a decision, you know, you got to commit to it and go for it. Um, and sometimes the decision is to back off. And that's one thing that I've been learning, you know, throughout racing in these deals is, is when to back off. And it's really important because you can actually slow yourself down by going for a move that's really not there. Even if you take over the move, you know, it may have just slowed you down too much or you could have just passed it maybe on the straightaway like right here, you know, later on on the track and made it just a more smooth pass. So there's just a lot going on. So if you're a new guy, um, I definitely preach watching you know, filming your races and going back and watching your footage and just learning because basically you get to relive the race and get to see it all over again and get that information in your head and um, use it for uh, future races. Guy that guy that right there, that is Chris, and he's tracking me down. He's walking me down. I don't know it's Chris. I just kind of know someone's back there. His little headlights aren't working. I don't know if he didn't turn them on or what. I'm kidding. You can't turn them on. They come on automatically. But um, I know he's back there. So I'm trying to just take my normal lines, basically qualifying lines going as fast as I can, trying to eat up these laps. That way I maintain what I have. I know I don't have, you know, I'm not in a winning cart situation tonight. So, um, you know, eighth, pay, eighth place pays more points than ninth place. So let's get eighth place, you know, because I can't get seventh because there's nobody in front of me. So let's just maintain what we have. Try to play, try to play it smart. Some people get really frustrated when they have a bad night. And sometimes I've seen people park their carts. Which, you know, I'm not going to lie. I felt like doing that before, too. This is, this is a lapper. Um, <laughs> he waves. Hello. Get on camera. Put you on camera. When I saw that, I kind of started laughing. Um, I didn't know he did that because, I mean, I'm not turned around looking at him. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, so part of, you know, of, of, of being competitive is, is managing your bad nights. Like, this wasn't particularly a good night for me. I'd, like, I'd love to be top five, you know, of course, top three and better to win um, but again I'm trying to win I'd rather win the championship than win this race you know um, so uh, you have to manage your bad nights and really work with what you have and just do the best you can and salvage as many points as you can take a defensive line here and uh, like salvage as many points as you can so at the end of the of the year hopefully you have enough to uh, get you top three or you know even get you the championship which would be cool if i win the championship it'll be a good year for me i, I won it at the first league racing series at Lone star car park and then if i win this one this will be my second ever league championship at dkc which will be cool um i'm gonna start focusing more on club racing in my own cart but um you know i may 
come back and race league. It just kind of depends on what happens um, at the track. We'll just we'll just see. I don't know. The plan is to focus on club racing now. So we've got one more lap to go here, and this is the second to last race of the season. Not worried about him overtaking me in this corner. It's going to be the exit of the new corner. So not this one. It's going to be this one right here. That's where I'm a little bit nervous. I have not been running well coming out of that corner. And then this corner right here. It's got to be careful on the exit. Take a peek behind me. Don't see him close. If he's not right behind me on my bumper, then you're pretty pretty home free at this point so yeah I know that I'm home free at this point I'm gonna keep the spot so I finished an a spot you know nothing dramatic happened in this race this is more of just uh, giving the new guys advice on on lead racing and maybe a little encouragement or whatever and uh, you know trying to talk about how to manage your race and manage your season a little fist bump from Chris all right guys thanks for watching I hope you um, well it's kind of boring. I'm sure you didn't love this race, but that's what happened. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.